All right, guys, what's up? So before I even continue, like and subscribe to this channel. Share it up. Help me build it. I'm trying to get to my to at least my first 100 subscribers. That's that's my goal right now. I'm just trying to get to my first 100. So if, you, if you're watching this, if you have already subscribed, thank you. The story I got for you guys today is my first foot chase. First foot chase with Atlantic City Police Department. And to tell you the truth, this was probably like my only foot chase that I ever had in law enforcement. Like, no bullshit. I wasn't really given much opportunity working on the boardwalk to get involved in a lot of shit like that. You know, but like I said before in another video, if you were a class two on the boardwalk, you weren't given a car. So without a car, it took longer to get to certain things. So if there was a call, like a large fight or anything like that, which required you to make, like run after somebody or get there, you know, the fucking five, car, five cops would be there Cops with cars would be driving up on the boardwalk, taking whatever you do. So you would have to really get lucky to be close to a foot chase or to have, unless you were working on the street. So on this night, we were, we were given, uh, we were given these overtime details at Bally's Mountain Bar and the Beach Bar. The department was understaffed at that time so that they didn't really have a lot of uh, full-time guys working, you know, three, four in the morning. There were a lot of fights taking place, a lot of things. So they made an, uh, they made a detail for the class twos, like four of us to pick up a couple of nights, like Friday, Saturday, whatever, to, just to make sure everything was good. So I was signed up and on this particular night. It was me. I forget, I, I forget who my partner was. It was two other officers, uh, Warren and Maria. They were partnered up. I forget who the fuck my partner was. But at some point, at some point, at some point, he, um, I don't know. We do, I don't know. I don't know where the fuck. I don't, at some point, it was just me, Warren, and Maria outside. We were outside talking to our sergeant. <clears throat> Damn, what the fuck? He might have went to the bathroom or something, for real, for real. So we're outside. We're talking to one of our sergeants. We're outside just talking, bullshitting, like no issue, no, nothing's going on. No fights. At some point, this dude walks up to us, and he's like, hey, man, like, we just got threatened by this dude. He's over here bugging. He got a gun. He's saying he has a gun, blah, 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 blah. And we're looking at him. We're not really taking him serious because working on the boardwalk, we got that shit all the time, every day. You know, you got those people that try to be funny. They see a cop, and it's like, hey, officer, like, it wasn't me. Don't lock me up. Like, you know, you get those people like that. So that's what I just felt like it was. That we all thought it was. He walks away. He comes back with his girl. This girl's like, hey, you know, how come you guys, not, you guys aren't doing anything? This guy, he's saying he has a gun, just threatened us, blah, blah, blah. So we're like, okay, well, who is he? What does he look like? Like, we start trying to get information from her. She start, she's points behind us. She's like, he's, he's right over there. He's walking right there. So we all look, as we start looking, like we all turn our heads at the same time, look, he's looking back, makes eye contact with us. And he's probably like 30 feet away from us. Puts his hood up and just took off running. Now he starts running in the direction in between, like on Arkansas Avenue. Anybody familiar with that area that you, you already know, right in between the pier. So he makes that right going down the ramp towards Pacific Avenue, off the boardwalk. He starts running off the boardwalk towards Pacific Avenue. I take off after him. Warren takes off after him. At some point, my phone, I had my phone in my shirt pocket. That shit popped right out of my, I stopped, went back, got my phone, grabbed that shit. And I think, the, I think Maria, she might've gotten in the truck with, uh, with our sergeant. So me and Warren, we're running down the front. We're thinking we Mike Lowry and fucking Marcus Burnett. We're running down the street, <sighs> chasing this motherfucker. This dude was fast. <laughs> this motherfucker was fast. Made it up to the, to Pacific Avenue. Dude makes a right. Warren's out of gas. Warren's on, hands on his knees. Like, I'm like, yo, where he go? Where he go? Where he go? <sighs> that way. He went over there. So I'm like, all right. I don't see the dude. But he told me he went in that direction. And again, this is us on the call. Like, we're supposed to be on the radio giving the description out. We're supposed to be, we're just chasing this motherfucker. So we're just like, he says he's over there. We're at the corner of Pacific and what? Is that Arkansas Avenue or Kansas Avenue? 
on the corner. I make that right. I start running down to the next street. I don't see this fucking guy. I'm running to the next corner and I'm looking around like, where the fuck is he at? I hear on the radio, he came back over towards Wild Wild West where where he made that first right. That's the that's where the Wild Wild West area is for, for Bally's. So what he did was when he made that initial right off Pacific Avenue, he ran up the sidewalk. When he cut back towards the Wild Wild West, in between the sidewalk and the and the casino, there's these fucking tall ass pillars and trees and shit all along it. So he cut in on the other side of it. So he we we ran <laughs> like so we ran past each other. I didn't even see the motherfucker. So I'm on the corner. I hear on the radio, yeah, he's back over here. I run back towards the Wild Wild West. <clears throat> And I, I'm probably get to like maybe, I'm like 10 feet away from him. And Maria, I don't know where the fuck she came from, but she starts walking in front of him. So he, he was almost trapped, but like he pretty much was trapped. Throws himself on the ground. Like it was kind of like one of those, okay, like, fuck it, like, I'm trying. Throws himself on the ground. She gets on top of him, like, hey, motherfucker. Does all the, bunch of other cops come and, um, you know, we start searching him. We, we lift him up. I'm sur I searched him. We start asking him, like, yo, where's the gun at? Where's the gun at? Because remember, like, we're getting told that he has a gun. He was threatening people, this and that. Oh, I don't got no gun, man. You know, I don't got no gun. All I, all I got is some weed, man. I just threw some weed. I got. And we're like, nah, bro. Like, like you, the, way you, the way you ran, you ran like you had something to hide. Like, nobody runs. Even though that's not necessarily true because there's a lot of people who run from the police with stupid ass shit. They, for the dumbest reason, they just run thinking that they're going to... So we're like, nah, like nobody's going to run like that for for some weed. Where's the gun at? Where's the gun at? Excuse me. <clears throat> Oof. <sighs> so he keeps saying he didn't, he didn't have a gun. He never had a gun. So he's handcuffed. We take him up. One of the full-time guys comes. They put him in the car. I get in the car with the full-time dude transporting him over. As we're being, as we're transporting him over to the station, we hear over the radio that a gun was found in the bushes, like in the same area as he was running and cutting back and forth and all that shit. A gun was found. So we take him in in the holding area. You know that's where he gets. We, we, he gives us all the information. You know, you get a piece of paper, name, birthday, all text, like just all his basic information. We get on that before he gets put into the into the to the jail. <laughs> I forget, I remember about, I remember, he was funny as hell. He was a young kid. Nigga was like 21, 21 kid. He, was, he wasn't even from out here. He was from like Virginia or something like that. And he was telling me, he was like, man, if I didn't smoke, he said, if I didn't smoke, I would have, y'all niggas would have been gone. Or I would have been gone on y'all. And he was like, like, bro, why are you smoking and running from the police? Like, you not, you're not being smart about it. So he was a cool dude. I'm not even gonna say like he didn't give us give me a hard time during that little process during that time I was with him. And um we he went into the jail and that was that. After he was taken in the back for the into the jail, we had to do the paperwork. So it was me, Warren, and Maria. We were the ones who, since we were involved in that, we we had to do the, the paperwork. I had to do a, a, a supplemental report. So, you know, I'm there for like an hour, hour and a half after two hours, just finishing the report while they do their shit. I go home. I'm excited. Because I'm like, you know, I just got on. This is like, I'm I'm like four months in the department. You know, I'm thinking like, damn, we, I just got in my first foot chase. This dude had a gun. Like, this is going to help me, blah, blah, blah. This is going to look good. And... You know, it was just good for me because I was like, this is what, I, like, this is what you kind of you kind of get into that job for, to deal with shit like that, to be around that type of shit. So, and I, I went home, I was like, to my girl at the time, I'm like, yeah, you know, I can't wait to be on the newspaper. I, we chased this dude, he had a gun, he blah, blah, blah. I'm excited. Next morning, I wake up, I'm on my phone, I'm, I'm reading the press, I'm reading, 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 and I see about to I see the story. And no, nowhere is my name found in the story. Nowhere it says I chased the dude or I had anything to do with the story. So I'm like, man, get the fuck out That's some bullshit. Just because my, I was like, cause I didn't, I didn't do the report. Like I didn't do the, the main initial report. So whoever did that, whoever did the charges, that's who gets the credit. So I'm thinking like, 
But I chased this motherfucker, man. If I didn't chase him, because Warren, that nigga was done. He was gassed out. He was on the corner up and said, so I'm thinking, man, if I didn't chase that dude, then what the fuck? I, maybe he would have gotten caught. Maybe he would have gotten caught. Because they had some dudes out there that, that that they were good with foot chases. And I was just like, man, that's some bullshit. And I wasn't angry. I wasn't mad. I wasn't like, oh, it's so mad at my like, It was just kind of like, damn, them playing me out like that. So, you know, I, re I remember going to a roll call like the next couple of days. And everybody was talking about it, especially people in the unit. Because in that unit... You had people that they would get a gun, they would get certain things off the street, they would get a guy off the street, and man, the and the the ego would just blow up. It'll be like you can't tell them shit. It's like, oh, I got this gun off the street. I got it, and you could just tell motherfuckers started getting attitudes and started had this 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 hot shit. Like you can't tell me nothing. I just did this, and it's like, bro, like you're still a class too. You doing all this shit. You fighting crackheads, chasing crackheads down, locking them up, doing all this crazy shit. Okay, you got a great, you got a gun. You got a great, wonderful. My, but you still class two. You get interviewed how many fucking times? You doing all this shit for what? They're telling us don't do all this crazy extra shit because it really don't mean nothing. And of course, you know, you get experience. Don't, it's, not, it's not that you don't get anything in that job. You get great experience doing it. But it was just kind of like... People really took that shit and it blew their mind up like pfft, on another level. And um and it happened. It happened in that case, you know, to certain people around, you know, like I said, just you couldn't you couldn't tell them nothing. But that was something that was something big in the in that department where it was kinda like if you if you got a case, if you got a gun. People want to talk about it until the next person does. And the next person can find a gun in the next, you know, 20 minutes after you find, find one. The next day. Same shit with a bunch of with negative shit. You fuck up, everybody's going to be talking about it until the next person fucks up. And it's just a cycle. And it's just kind of like, so, but uh, the next day in roll call, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about that experience, about that foot chase, because, hey, Go to your cage. Barking and shit. But I learned a lot about that job because when I said that we were chasing the guy, we were supposed to be the ones talking to dispatch, talking to the other officers about what did what who what did the man look like? What's his description? Where which way did he run? You know, just any and we didn't do it, and we didn't do that. You know, our sergeant came in, and he was like, guys, like, it was a great job. We got the guy. We got a gun off the street. But you have to be more cautious. You got to be more aware. You can't have that tunnel vision when you're in foot chases because we got to have the communication. Um, come to find out that dude, you know, the gun was loaded. He had a gun. And that would, could have been a whole different uh, scenario, situation, if, you know, we're chasing the guy. He's running down the street. Pulls a gun out, bam, 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 and keeps running. It shit happens. It shit really happens all the time, and that's why sometimes with with with, with police in America and a lot of things that we see on. Like, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. When police fuck up, I'll be the first one to be there when they fuck up. Especially with everything that I know, and we're well, not everything. You know, cause I don't know everything, but I learned a lot in in the few years that I spent. But I could look at a situation and be like, that cop fucked up. And I would say he fucked up. But there's also times, there's also many situations where that cop's just trying to go home. And in that case, I want, like, I wanted to go home. But that could have been a whole, that whole thing could have just turned shitty if that guy just wanted to pull his gun out. Because then we got to shoot him, but then we're not speaking on the radio. We're not communicating with... That job can turn from zero to 100 very fast. And people don't understand it. But people feel very comfortable just saying, oh, well, he should have just done that. You can't shoot somebody in the back. You can't, you can't shoot. In Jersey, you can't shoot somebody in the back. Legally, as a police officer, a police officer can't shoot somebody in their back if they feel a threat. If they feel they have a, like, if they feel a need to. And in that situation, we were told the guy had a gun. He threatened two people with a gun. When we try to talk to him, 
he took off running. So it's kind of like, oh, sure, maybe he does got a gun. And if he would have ran off and for whatever reason, if he would have just made a movement and, you know, me and my partners weren't so just so caught up on the chase and we decided to shoot him, like, that's the realness about that job. That's how quick things change. And it could be anything. You know, I could be on the boardwalk, and there's been plenty of times I'll be on the boardwalk, nothing. This fucking slow-ass day, nothing's going on. And some mom comes up to me, oh, my God, my son, I can't find my son. He's on the beach somewhere. So then instantly, just like that, oh, you got to call this. You got to call the fucking lifeguards, beach patrol, everything. And you got to just be on your shit. So I'm not going to tell people to kind of like, you know, you, people feel how they feel about law enforcement. And I get it. I understand it. But um, the, like these stories, these perspectives, and the experience that I've gone through, they're real. And I'm sharing them with you so people can understand both sides of it. I'm not in law enforcement anymore. I haven't been a cop in three years. I don't plan on going in. But the things that I've went through, the things that I've heard about, the things that I've seen, witnessed, experienced, a lot of people haven't. They, and they haven't gotten it from somebody like myself and given it to you guys without no bullshit. Cause I got nothing to defend. I got nothing to hide about it. It's, it's real shit. So I hope you guys enjoy that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have more, more stories like this, obviously, um, just to give you guys a better understanding of just who I am, things I've gone through in the past couple of years. And just because without all the stories, every, everything I've talked to you, I wouldn't be making this shit right now. I wouldn't be making these videos. So, but Take it for what you want. Take it for whatever you want. You know, take that story for whatever. But people need to understand that that job, that job is not for everybody. That's job, that job is not for everybody. And, um, you know, shit's real. Shit's real out there. Whether you're a civilian, whether you're a cop, you got to be aware. You got to be pay attention. Don't be stupid. Be aware of your surroundings. Don't get caught slipping. Don't. It's real. New Reason shirts, man. If you guys supporting them, if you guys like them, hit me up on my Instagram at nrivera9123 at newreason underscore clothing. DM me. Let me know what you guys think about them and we can set something up. Like and subscribe to my channel. Got nothing more for you guys, man. Be safe. Stay positive, man. Catch you on the next one. Peace.